Hi, welcome to our second module, Pulmonary Equations in a Nutshell. And today's module, uh, the second one, is the alveolar ventilation equation in a nutshell. And if you look at mo many textbooks, not all textbooks, what you'll find out is that the alveolar ventilation equation is written this way as V dot A equals V dot CO2 over PA CO2 times 800 and 63 millimeters of mercury. And sometimes you'll see the 863 just written as, as 0.863. So let's break this apart since this is the first module where I'm actually showing you equations and talk to you a little bit about how you think about an equation when you look at it. And the first thing you should do with an equation is look at the left hand side and see what is the dependent variable or the focus of our equation. What is it that gets uh, built based on the things on the other side of the equation? And in this case, uh, uh, the alveolar ventilation is about calculating alveolar ventilation if you use it as written here. And uh, so the next thing that you do is to look at the other side of the equation and you see that the things that went into alveolar ventilation were carbon dioxide production, V dot CO2, and the arterial value of carbon dioxide, and finally this uh, 863 millimeters of mercury that sometimes happen. 863 millimeters of mercury is what you use if V dot CO2 and V dot A are both in mils per minute or both in liters per minute, and you use 0.863 if you express alveolar ventilation in liters per minute and carbon dioxide production in mils per minute. So I like to just say, let's assume the units are the same, whichever ones that you want to use, and then it's easy. We don't have to worry about decimal places. But what does the alveolar ventilation equation tell us about? And, and from a clinical point of view, the reason we're interested in the alveolar ventilation is from the point of view of interpreting a patient's arterial CO2. And so PaCO2 is the terminology we use to talk about a patient's arterial CO2. Where do we measure that? We take an arterial blood gas from the aorta or another large artery, and we give it to the clinical lab, and they measure the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the patient's blood. So that's what we mean by uh, PaCO2. So even though this is sometimes seen in textbooks, I think it's much more appropriate to write the alveolar ventilation equation this way so that we can focus on the left-hand side, which is what we're going to use as clinicians uh, and focus on, is what makes up a patient's arterial CO2. And I've added a, a term here, P big A CO2, uh, uh, because numerically P little a CO2 uh, is going to be numerically equivalent to P big A CO2 in patients because of the way gas exchange works. We have a V dot CO2, a carbon dioxide production on the other side. So that's one of the things that help determine a patient's PA CO2 and an alveolar ventilation on the other side. So that's the other thing that helps determine a patient's arterial CO2. And then we have a correction factor which we might ask, where the heck does that number come from, 863? So uh, from there, we want to go on and start to break things down one by one and talk a little bit more about the other factors in this equation. So P big A CO2 is equal to P little a CO2. So just to remind you, alveolar CO2, P big A CO2, is the partial pressure in the inspired air for the patient. Whereas P little a CO2 is the partial pressure in the large arteries, the blood of the large arteries uh, or, or the aorta. But numerically, uh, the air has 40 millimeters of mercury, the end capillary blood has 40 millimeters of mercury, and the artery has 40 millimeters of mercury. So what we're going to learn here is that we can use the arterial CO2, a sample from the patient's blood, to tell us something about what was in the patient's air uh, and know with some confidence that those things are equivalent to each other.
The next term in our equation is V dot CO2, which we said is CO2 production. What do we mean by CO2 production? Well, here's our uh, subject, and she's exercising, so she's producing CO2. And all that CO2 is going to be carried by the blood into the airspace in our gas exchange surfaces, the alveoli, where it's right next to the alveolar septa. And then it has to be removed at the same rate that it's carried in uh, uh, from her body through breathing, okay? So through moving it out through the trachea and out. So uh, uh, what we see is that CO2, uh, as it is leaving the body, is proportion to the CO2 as it is being produced by the uh, blood. And it's therefore a measure of the metabolic activity uh, of the body, i.e. how much ATPs are being made by the TCA cycle. Ultimately, uh, you need to get rid of CO2 at the same rate as you make it, and you do this by moving air uh, at some rate out of the body, and some fraction of that air is carbon dioxide, so the, the multiplication of alveolar ventilation rate flow out of the uh, gas exchange surfaces times the fraction of that air uh, that is CO2 is equal to the rate at which you are removing CO2 from the gas exchange surfaces. So that leaves us uh, with one more thing to do here, and that is how do we turn an FaCO2 into a PaCO2? And the way we do that is to uh, divide by barometric pressure. So uh, we substituted from the last equation FaCO2 uh, with PaCO2 uh, uh, by multiplying by this. And then the next thing we need is a correction factor that uh, makes up for the fact that we measure the rate at which air flows out of the patient's body under body temperature pressure saturated conditions, but we always chart CO2 under standard temperature pressure dry to allow us to uh, convert from uh, BTPS to standard temperature pressure dry, we need a correction factor of some sort. And it turns out this correction factor has another PB minus 47 in it that cancels out with this one here leaving us with simple constant 863 millimeters of mercury. So the 863 comes from two places, correcting from BTPS to standard temperature pressure dry and make going from a fraction of CO2 to a partial pressure of CO2 in the alveolar ventilation equation. So what we know is uh, PaCO2 tells us something about a patient's uh, arterial CO2 value and how to interpret it. And we've learned that an increase in CO2 uh, uh, gets referred to uh, clinically as the patient is hypoventilating, and a decrease in CO2 gets interpreted clinically as the patient is hyperventilating. And uh, for us to, to do this, let's take a look at uh, just a, a set of uh, uh, arterial blood gas values I got off of the internet. And usually we're looking at acid-base status when we look at arterial blood gases. But the other thing you should look directly at is the CO2 because it tells you directly about a patient's hypoventilation or hyperventilation. And we see that uh, in this particular uh, uh, blood gas, the patient's CO2 is 63.2, which is above the normal range, and so we conclude that this patient is hypoventilating. Just by definition, they're hypoventilating because their CO2 is high. Let's take a, a, a just a little bit closer look at then what do we mean by saying when the patient's CO2 is high, they're hypoventilating. And what we mean is, uh, uh, in terms of normal, is their airflow from their gas exchange surfaces low uh, in proportion to the rate at which uh, you need to get rid of CO2 and in proportion to 
their metabolic activity. So we can uh, redefine hypoventilation as meaning the patient has an inappropriately low airflow from their gas exchange surfaces given their metabolic CO2 production. And we can define uh, hyperventilation as the patient having an inappropriately high airflow from their gas exchange surfaces given their uh, metabolic CO2 production. So just to drive this home, let's think about a lesson. In exercise, we all know that we're breathing rapidly, we're tachypnic, and we're breathing deeply, uh, hyperpnic. But it's not fair to say that we are hyperventilating. Why? Because if we look at a patient's uh, PaCO2, the whole reason that they've increased their airflow or their alveolar ventilation is to keep their CO2 uh, very close to normal, uh, which is exactly what the chemoreceptors are all about, uh, maintaining uh, CO2 homeostasis. And so although we're breathing rapidly and we're breathing deeply when we're exercise, uh, when we exercise, we're not hypoventilating. And that's the kind of thinking that the alveolar ventilation equation should promote in us. So that's the alveolar ventilation equation in a nutshell. Thanks for watching.